being heavy handed yields no benefit yeah. or profit because when you are heavy handed all you're doing is pushing people yeah. away uh, i'll give one example one person literally said this look miles i know you're right um but the way you're coming at me is all wrong and if that is what being a christian is i don't want to be a christian and that is burned into my mind because what i was there is a stumbling block because of being obnoxious. Age one united, come on, don't fight it. You heard it here first, now run and tell of the right to fight it. You know, today uh, we're gonna be doing a, uh, our format a little bit differently. We don't have a, a special guest, it's just us, but we wanna discuss a couple of things here today that, you know, part of the whole show of Run and Tell is as God is dealing with us as his people, we like to update each other. As, as brothers and sisters in Christ as to what the Lord is speaking, what God is doing currently right now in our lives. And, and you know, none of us are perfect and, um, and we're all learning and growing. And we're, as we're open to the scriptures and open to the leading of the Holy Spirit, God is going to impart some lessons that we need to learn that we may not get right off the bat. And uh, so we want to discuss a couple of those topics today. One thing, Rick, that I can say... Uh, God has been dealing with me in these uh, these last few weeks is um, I read this book or I'm reading this book called The Gospel by Ray Ortland and uh, I've been reading it with a few of the people from my church and it's been cool it's been what I've expected it to be kind of like creating this gospel community in church uh, as as the American church you know we lose sight of a lot of things because of our conveniences and um, the way we have things set up here. Um, that may get in the way of what God intended the gospel to create in his people, hmm. community that he intended. And so one of the things that has really rocked me, and I want to know your take on this. One of the things that Ray Ortland says in chapter six of his book is that rejection is built into the gospel. Now, right offhand, what, what is your response to that statement? Rejection is built into the gospel. Well, off the bat, it's the fact that the gospel will be rejected. That's that's what kind of pops into my mind, that mm -hmm. people reject the gospel um, daily, whether through their actions or, or you're just approaching someone and you begin to share that the gospel is the most rejected thing in culture. Yeah. Uh, so that's the thing that comes to mind. Um, the instructions given to the disciples um, that they would go into town, there, there wasn't, I guess, um, an ignorance to the fact that it would be rejected. He gave them specific instructions like, yo, when it does happen, mm -hmm. like dust your sandals off, man, and keep pushing yeah. because it will. Uh, Jesus yeah. himself was rejected. So, yeah. yeah. In today's culture, because, you know, we read the Bible and we um, we see how the apostles and the disciples, how they carried out the Great Commission when they went to a place. It was Paul's custom to go to the, the Jew first and then to the Gentile. He would go to the synagogues. And, you know, when they rejected, then he would go to the, the Gentiles. But I think that behavior that we see there, there's a contrast in how our culture kind of deals with things, especially uh, what we see on social media. So, so what do you think is the Christian's response to rejection? How it differs from what we see in the Bible to what we're seeing today? Okay. They they've begun to become um, almost identical in a way okay. because of the you know people refer to it as the cancel the cancel culture. Uh huh. Meaning someone does something, it's like yo unsubscribe, unfollow, block. Mm ruin his career, et cetera. So, you know, don't shop there now. You know, it's the yeah. cancer culture. And in a lot of ways, um, believers have adopt, adopted the same thing in response to it mm. because culture has a big play on your natural response. So if somebody is presenting the gospel to a loved one, a friend, a neighbor or whatever, and that person rejects it, then the, re the Christian today's response is a return rejection. Yes, distance. And that's not yes. something we see in the Bible, no, is what you're what saying. See. Yeah, it's not what we see. It's it's automatic rejection. It's like yo, like okay, well yeah. now I'm not hanging out with them. You hear people all the time in the church, like yo, like this is my family now. Mm. Why? Because my family aren't believers, and so I've distanced myself. I've, and it's in a way, they're saying I've rejected them, mm. just as they have rejected the gospel. And mm. we obviously don't see that in scripture or supported by scripture. Uh, yeah. we, we do see this unity brought, in, brought into one body of Christ and us being given these gifts for the greater good of that community, but it's also for the greater good of the world, that we're to be the light of the world. And so, the yeah, part of that is really 
being in the world, as he says, be in the world, not of it. So there's just yeah. a distinction that needs to be made uh, because I get what you're saying, but maybe somebody may kind of be like, well, wait a minute, didn't Jesus say, who are my mother, my brother, and my sisters, and stuff like that? Yeah. We have to be well balanced, right? We can't in one cheek say, you know, Jesus said to tell his mother, hey, who is my mother, and my brother, and my sisters, but those who do the will of God. Mm -hmm. uh, but he also doesn't say, ostracize people he yeah. doesn't say be heavy-handed with people yeah. he says if they reject the gospel then dust your feet off yeah not oh okay then i'm gonna you know i'm gonna yeah. say all this i'm gonna like um you know what blaine said make them cry or something like mm -hmm. that just because they disagree you know i think that they stayed like paul stood persistent in preaching the gospel until they ran him out of town mm -hmm. when they rejected him he didn't just be like Oh, I'm gonna find somebody else who will listen to me or anything like that, right? Yeah. Well, we're called, we're called, we're commanded to love our neighbor, mm -hmm. and that's literally those around us, those yeah. we come in contact with. Yeah. Um. So I I want to read First Peter three. Uh, it's addressing you know sharing the gospel, having an answer and a response for the reason why you believe the defense of the faith, but. Mm -hmm. Um, in verse 16, it says, Yet do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that when you are accused, those uh, who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. Mm. So that's also, I mean, this is typical stuff where you have something that is uh, common knowledge where people will, will you know, quote the, the verse. But what's not common knowledge is, you know, the, the verses in front of it and the verses uh, behind it mm. uh, so, so keep it in context what yeah, he's man. talking about yeah. Yeah. yeah so you don't just pull one thing out and then you know you're yeah. just hitting people with Can't the gospel cherry pick the verses yeah because there's there's a way to approach things and there's a way to say things mm -hmm. um, we're called to be seasoned with our speech meaning our conversations they have to be tactful yeah understanding the circumstances and the environment uh, and you know when you're going to share something specific, you know yeah. you just you, you gotta have wisdom, you know. Like you yeah. can't just walk into a situation. You don't you don't walk up to someone's funeral, and know they're a non-believer and they rejected Jesus and tell everybody don't go to hell like him. Yeah. You, you just don't do that. That's not wise. That's not yeah. being loving. That's not being gentle. That will draw nobody to Christ because it doesn't reflect the love of Christ. Yeah, because you just determined what their trajectory is. Yeah. You don't know if if uh, that moment God is going to use later on down the line. Mm -hmm. you, what you do know, uh, and this is a perfect transition into, into kind of where uh, I want to go with this. You can't box people into that. God is going to work in people's lives despite us right so it can go both ways like hey you're, you're being a jerk about your faith <laughs> yeah. or you're being gracious with it you know either way it, that doesn't mean that they're going to accept or reject at that very moment and and we shouldn't just determine that for them yeah and so um and i think that applies to how we deal with each other as well mm -hmm. now i can honestly say that the reason why you know, this topic and this idea hits me very personally is because I, I have to admit that in my past, in my immaturity, that I have been heavy handed, not just with uh, non-believers, but with believers, people mm -hmm. that, you know, um, I I love dearly. Like, uh, I don't know if you remember the episode, the last episode, you and I, it was just you and I, and we were talking about your dad. And I said that, you know, the, the thing that I noticed about your dad is that he loves hard. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I said that is because I see that in myself as well. A part of that is I've been heavy handed and kind of brute with with people. I've even been like that with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, you know, we've made amends multiple times over and stuff, right? Multiple. <laughs> yeah. If people only knew, <laughs> maybe one day they will know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, just a side note real quick, but uh, so the people know that... Um, I took a screenshot of one of our first videos together and we were laughing sitting next to each other and I sent it to you and the only response you sent was miracle and I knew exactly what you meant by that mm -hmm. it, or testimony you said testimony, yeah, testimony and I said miracle yeah. and it's so true because uh, if people only knew the, the stuff that we've gone through together. Uh, they would see the fact that we were able to sit here and have yeah. this this brotherly talk. They would see that that was a miracle. And, yeah. But my point is this, is that even with believers, we have to be uh, seasoned in our speech with, with grace and mercy and not be so heavy handed. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I guess this is obviously my opinion. When 
someone becomes heavy handed or judgmental in a reality, um, it's because they've forgotten what they've been forgiven of. Mm. They've somehow drifted away um, from being forgiven and being called to forgive as we have been forgiven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a testament to the reason why we're both at this table, because I've done things that are unforgivable. Um, yet we're here mm -hmm. because we've forgiven like we've been forgiven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. that, that's really the, the core of it. Mm -hmm. That's self-righteousness in a way. Yeah. When you become heavy handed with somebody, exactly. it's self-righteousness. That, if we're going to put a pin on it, like even get more microscopic with this. Uh, I know for me, I'm sure uh, what you just said is is definitely true for a lot of people um, as far as it being uh, uh, ju judgmental and, and stuff like that. For me, I think it was that self-righteousness, the pride. This, if we're going to get very microscopic and specific, mm -hmm. it's pride. It's, okay, I'm trying to lay this, this uh, even though I'm right, the way I'm laying it down is a response to the rejection of that truth. Mm -hmm. So if I say, hey, look, it's, it's sin to do this, and they say, oh, I'm going to do it anyways, then all of the pride in me just wells up because it's like, wait a minute, but <laughs> this is what I believe, and this is what I do, and yeah. how dare you? Yeah. Because you so easily, and I don't mean like you generally, but anybody that I've ever been heavy-handed with, um, they reject it. What you're telling, or the way I am hearing it, is that you're rejecting me because this yes. is what I'm doing. It's a self-righteous, and it's a prideful way to respond. And so when we talk about that the gospel has rejection built into it, what we're saying, if we're going to kind of unpack that and make it a more broad sense, it's this, is that, hey, look, truth, people are not going to accept it yeah. or or they are going to reject it. Um, you know, when it comes to a Christian, I can say, look, this is what a Christian does, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if they say, all right, uh, but I'm not going to do that. And if I start wanting to fight, what point is what point yeah. is there in that? Yeah, right. There's so much to that though because we're talking about you. You mentioned a couple of things, but one of the things that you pointed out was you felt uh, you were being rejected. Exactly. And that could easily be a trigger. Yeah. The heart is inherently wicked. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So things they boil over. Yeah. We could mean well by sharing the gospel, and by a response can trigger us can trigger emotion, can trigger um, things that we've experienced in our past. And so we, we kind of go back to the default. You talk about being uh, prideful, um, someone who has prided themselves in sacrifice. Mm. You know, like, man, all the things I sacrificed. Yeah. I was recently watching a documentary, and, and um, it's about the, the basketball teams that they have in prison. Mm. Um, it's, it's a pretty good documentary. But anyways, long story short, there, there's this portion where this guy, he's praying and and. He's, in a sense, pumping himself up like to go and speak and share uh, uh -huh. about the Lord. And he's saying in his prayer, he's like, everything I've sacrificed for you. You know, and, and it can mean well. Yeah. The sacrifice have, means nothing now exactly, because he's made it about yes, himself. Exactly. Because it, it, it can mean well, but have the opposite effect. Yeah. It is the approach yeah. um, to the throne yeah. that really affects everything. So yeah. that's why we constantly got to keep checking our hearts, man. Yeah, yeah. There is. I, I want to recount a specific situation where you know when I read this chapter, it really hit me right in between the eyes. Where it's like, all right, I I now understand what I did wrong in this situation, and and I laid that trip like, hey, a Christian doesn't do this. If you really believe that the Bible says this, then you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do this. And this person flat out told me, look, Miles. I know you're right, but the way you're coming at me is making me not want to do it. Now, it's not about who's right and wrong in this situation. It's about how I am imposing that truth on, on somebody, the yeah. truth, right? All I'm doing is pushing them further yeah. away yeah. by how I do it. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about the gospel and how we're sharing it with people, what benefit does a person have in, in, in laying down a brute and a very strong-handed argument with somebody who, at first glance, rejects what they're saying? When you're not approaching in a heavy-handed way or in a judgmental way, you are not, um, obviously, when you're doing those things, you're not emulating Jesus. Mm. 
And so when you come with this gentleness, with this respect, you're not only presenting the gospel, but you're also presenting like, yo, this is, this is what it feels like to be accepted. Mm. You're emulating everything you've experienced. You comfort um, them in the same way you've been comforted. And we've all been comforted by salvation. Yeah. And so when sharing the gospel, that needs to be expressed. That needs yeah. to be shown. Like so you what said, happens when it's not? What happens when it is heavy handed? It's in a way, not them rejecting the gospel, but the gospel rejecting them. Mm. That's what they're seeing. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, if you approach somebody in the manner like you're saying, like, yo, if, if you don't do this, yeah, you know, there, there's now this huge ultimatum, like you will be rejected. Yeah. Now and, you said something just a moment ago that I think really emphasizes the point you just made, which is it's not emulating Jesus. Yeah. And if we think about it, Jesus's first trip here, his first advent, what did he come to do? His first advent? You're talking about being born his, in the human flesh? Yes. What did he come to, to do? To save the world, man. To save the world by how? The sacrifice on the cross. The sacrifice on the cross. So he came knowing that according to the law, all these fools should be smashed and yes, burned. Yes, <laughs> but yes. he did not come to lay down the hammer of justice. No. He came to, to express and display the fullness of God's grace and love and mercy on the cross, even though he was right. Yeah, he came to serve. We're not trying to paint a picture of his hippie Jesus. We know that he came first as a lamb and he's going to come as a yeah. lion. But right now, since we are in the dispensation of grace, in the time of grace, the way the gospel is effective is when we present the gospel as it's supposed to be, yeah. which is... God's um, extending hand of love and mercy and compassion, because that mm-hmm. is what Jesus exemplified in his yeah. life, death, and resurrection. And there's there's a heavy obligation for the generation, it's for our generation, for those in front of us to teach that. Yeah. Because I remember, um, you know, growing up in the church, there's, I didn't grow up in the church, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I got saved and I was being mentored, there wasn't a lot of that. Hmm. It was always... If someone disappeared for a while, I was just like, man, that dude fell off. Yeah. There's just this negative view. Yeah. And I remember um, not too long ago, someone came after, man, a long time, man. I hadn't seen the guy in, in at least, man, five to six months. Mm-hmm. And he came and I was talking with him like, man, dude, how are you doing? And we got deep into a conversation and he just flat out said, like, I was embarrassed to come back. Yeah. Like, I, I knew that you guys all knew that I fell off. I haven't been here and I was embarrassed to come back. Mm-hmm. And I, I just reassured him, like, yo, we all fall off. Yeah. We all fall short. And this is why we're here, to cling to Jesus. And I just encouraged him, like, yo, no matter what situation you find yourself in, feel free to come back. There's no judgment here. Yeah. You know, and, and people need to be reminded of that. They need yeah. to be shown the love of Jesus, bro. They need to be shown grace. Yeah. Unconditional love, faithful love. Yeah. When you think about the the guy that Paul uh, was writing about in First Corinthians, chapter seven, you know, sexual immorality. He was like, Hey, that guy is not receiving the correction. He needs to go yeah. for a little while, deliver him unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Yes. Right. But then it's, it's widely believed that in second Corinthians, he says, okay, receive that guy back into the mm-hmm. fellowship, mm-hmm. lest he be discouraged. Yeah. And so there has to be, even though there is a balance of, of hey, there has to be some yeah. sort of church discipline yeah. because but sin cannot run rampant we in the church. We talk about that, though, because a lot of people misidentify that man uh-huh. with struggling believers. Like, right. That this dude is a person is, that was living. Deliberate. Yes. Deliberate. Yes. He was, he was deliberately sinning. Boastful, arrogant. Exactly. All the above. That's like, there what was a Paul. Blatant, this, exactly. Yeah. There isn't. There's a huge difference that yeah. people need to see, man, that. This isn't someone all just struggling in their faith or or making mistakes. Yeah. This dude was the opposite, yeah. man. He was the opposite of all he that. He said, look, he said, he, he, it's pretty much this way. This guy was like, I'm going to do this, and what are you going to do about it? Yeah. That's, that's With the, a lot of Christianese lingo. <laughs> like how? Like, like what, you know, what? like, you know, Jesus, he, he loves us still. You know, <laughs> Jesus is grace. Like, we've been forgiven. Now we all need to move on. Yeah. <laughs> We need to move on past this. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus will figure it out. Yeah. But it's blatant sin. And or, it to be or called like, out. only God can judge me. I think that's one of those things. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It definitely is. Yes. Yeah. 
because what you're saying is is uh, if you're if you're blatantly living in that sin and there's correction or somebody is trying to correct and then you just say you know what I don't want to listen to that correction. Yeah. Only God could judge me. Then what you're literally saying is you're speaking for God as if God's yeah. okay with what if, you're if doing. If I show you scripture that is calling you out yeah, and someone responds, only God can judge me. I'm yeah. like, yeah, he is Yeah, right yeah. here. Exactly. <laughs> this is his word, yo. Yeah. So those of you out there, don't get it twisted. What we're saying here, we're not misunderstanding the difference between um, biblical uh, church discipline and then just people who <laughs> who you're relating the gospel with or even imparting some type of biblical truth with and and they're having difficulty applying it um a lot of it is tact but a lot of it is the the person's ability to i guess yield to the yeah. holy spirit at that time yeah. People, because of immaturity yeah. and so we have to have patience we got to be gentle Especially yeah. when restoring people. Yeah, I'll be honest, man. And, you know, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Rick is a um, young adult Bible study leader. He leads a Bible study. And once upon a time, I did also. And I don't know if you've ever struggled with this, Rick. But uh, if I can be honest, and, and I hope that, that the people I've done this with are watching this so that they know that, um, that man, that was my immaturity. And, and I wish... I would have known better, um, and I would have had better examples also. Um, but I remember them, they would come to a Bible study, and then I would uh, see them, and they continue going to church, but they would stop coming to the Bible study, and then I would hit them up, and I'd be like, hey, man, or hey, sis, like, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see you back, and and they'd say, oh, okay, and then they would just not go, and I would take that personal. Mm-hmm. I would take that as if it was a rejection of me, not even considering what may be going on in their life. Mm -hmm. That was the least of my concerns. My concern was, okay, why are they not coming? Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Mm -hmm. That back to that pride and that self-righteousness. It's obviously a, a, a thing that I'm not proud of, but I understand now that being heavy handed yields no benefit yeah. or profit because when you are heavy handed, all you're doing is pushing people yeah. away. Uh, I'll give one example. One person literally said this, look, Miles, I know you're right, um, but the way you're coming at me is all wrong. And if that is what being a Christian is, I don't want to be a Christian. And that is burned into my mind because what I was there is a stumbling block because of being obnoxious. Mm -hmm. When I could have just said, you know what? Hey, if this is what you disagree with, look, I love you. Christ still loves you. And I'll pray that you uh, figure this thing out. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to pray with you uh, and be with you every step of this way until you figure this out. And some people do and some people don't. And But our job is not to sift the wheat. Our job is yeah. not to to separate the wheat from the tares. Yeah, that's God's job. Yeah, when when people um, in the world can be more tolerant than the church, we got a problem. Mm. Uh, you have these tight knit communities of people living in sin, uh, partying, doing all kinds of craziness, but they're there for each other. Mm. The camaraderie is there, mm. and that's what needs to be in the church. Like no matter what happens, you, you have to support people. You have to be. You have to love people. Yeah. You generally have to love people, even when they're making tremendous mistakes. Yeah. yeah, you have to be there for them, or else that person finds himself in a dark place, man, yeah. all alone with with no no wise counsel, yeah. just drifting, you know, isolating themselves. Yeah. You know, and you know you got to go in there. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, "What benefit is it for you to just love those who love you back?" Yeah, uh, it's not. There's no um, for between the believers. It's not about reciprocity. Mm-hmm. You know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Yeah. That's not service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it that's the that's the enemy of it. Yeah. And um and really it uh our best example is in Jesus. Yes it is, man. Yes it is. And that's how we should be as as brothers and sisters, man. We need to be a sanctuary for people mm-hmm. no matter what they're going through. Cuz what benefit is it to ostracize them? Yeah. What benefit is it to to yeah. To be heavy-handed with them, <laughs> yeah. all your, if they're not going to listen. It's wisdom, bro. Yeah. Like, it is just wisdom that comes throughout the years of yeah. experience with, with the Lord. Yeah. I'm going to be turning 30. 
I made it to 30, you know what I mean? And you just, like, you look back even, you know, five years ago. Yeah. And you just realize how some of the things you made a, a stance on meant nothing. <laughs> they meant nothing. Yeah. The, Why the did things, I have to die on that hill? Exactly. You're just like, that was yeah. so stupid. Yeah. And you see the byproduct of, you know, the holidays when the entire family is there. And how amazing that is uh, to have that. And especially in the Christian faith, like, you know, when we're, we're pursuing Jesus, it's always the long run. It's yeah. not the immediate, mm-hmm. you know, and when you're sharing with people, when you're just, when you're loving on people, you're not fighting for the moment. Yeah. You're fighting for the long run. Yeah. Of like, you know what? They're, they're, you know, they're not in agreement now, but I'm going to love and support them. Yeah. And when things do come crumbling, crumbling down, they always do. And that's the thing yeah. about believing God's word. And, you know, perhaps the issue with some people is that they don't believe God's word enough mm-hmm. to see the practical things that are in scripture, um, to, you know, get married before you guys move in with each other, like those things, mm-hmm. you know, to, to get married before you have sex with somebody because mm-hmm. you always have the consequences of it. Mm-hmm. The consequences aren't optional. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you deal with those things. Yeah. Uh, they don't go away when you get married. None of it. It, it always stays with you. Mm-hmm. And when those truths come full circle... You always look for somebody to, yeah. to rely yeah. on. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And if it's that person, if there's two people and one of them was some, and they both brought truth, and one of them brought it with grace, but the other one brought it with uh, passion, maybe it's, let's put it nicely and say passion, and, <laughs> and maybe they're a little obnoxious yeah. and heavy Instead of yelling, you're stupid, yeah. you're just like, you're messing up. Yeah. Who, who, <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. But who are you going to go to? You're going to go to the one who accepted with truth you, and man. Truth and grace. Yeah. And you know, Robbie Zacharias has a great um, uh, statement about this, but he says, love without truth is hypocrisy, but truth without love is obnoxious. Yeah. And that is so important today. Obnoxious. We need both of them. We yes, need we do. Love and truth. All right, you guys, that's it for today. This is Run and Tell. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you guys next time.